Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you my 10 favorite farmhouse DIYs. Hope you will enjoy it. The first one will be napkin rings. So these are these beautiful napkin rings that I made recently in my video. I took uh, this roll leftover from the uh, clear wrap. I cut them in four little pieces. I sand the edges a little bit. And then after that, I gave it one coat of uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. And then I'm using this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and uh, measuring how much I'm gonna use. Cut four pieces of it. And, and then wrapping each of these uh, little rings in the ribbon. I'm using my hot glue. And after that, I am using this Dollar Tree white twine. And I am creating a little bow. If you want to see the full tutorial, how I created a bow and uh, how I created these napkin rings, you can check out the description box. I'm going to have all these videos linked in the description box. After I attached it, I added a little gray button in the middle of the bow. And that completes these beautiful farmhouse napkin rings. They're made out of cardboard and some Dollar Tree items and nobody would ever say that that's how they're made. I'm absolutely um, happy how they turned out. Number two, rolling pins. I absolutely love these rolling pins. They're still sitting on my kitchen counter. I think they're beautiful decoration and just add some beautiful touch to my kitchen. I made these out of these, again, rolls from uh, the foil and a clear wrap. They are pretty sturdy, so uh, that's what I used. And I also used these little dowels that are actually leftovers of the foam brushes from the Dollar Tree. I cut them to the size using my box cutter. I sand the edges, and after that, I am using um, this piece of foam board that I had and cut out four little squares to create the ends of these um, rolling pins. I was using my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna have that linked in the description box as well. Then I'm using all adhesive from the Dollar Tree to attach uh, these circles to my rolling pins to actually close the ends of the rolling pins. And then I'm cutting these dowels in four um, same size pieces, sanding them a little bit and then after that, it's time to paint. For the rolling pins, I am uh, using Beverly chalk paint in a color mineral. And I am giving them uh, one coat each. And after that, I'm using a truffle by Beverly to dry brush it on the top of it. And you see how those lines created a beautiful, beautiful decor on these rolling pins. When I was done with this, Next thing will be to take my little dowels and I did opposite. I uh, used the base uh, truffle color and then I dry brushed it with this uh, mineral color. When I was done with uh, painting, I uh, used my hot glue to attach uh, these little handles to my rolling pins. Next thing would be to add the writing on one of the rolling pins. I use the pencil to write homemade in a ray down font and then I'm using just a marker to go over it and a Dollar Tree white twine to finish it off with a beautiful bow. I think they're absolutely perfect and I just cannot get over it. They were made from the cardboard that would be recycled. Number three, let's bake sign one more creation that was made out of things that I just had at home. I just think it's so pretty, so simple and gives that cozy feeling to my kitchen. To make it, I'm using this tower uh, blocks, uh, game blocks from the Dollar Tree and I am hot gluing two together. So sets of two, I had uh, five sets of two and I'm going to arrange them and hot glue them to create a house. I hot glue the base together and then I hot glue separately the 
a roof and I didn't attach a roof to the base and later you will see why. Next I am taking just a cardboard from a cereal box to trace it, um, trace the house. I trace it with a pencil, cut it out. Next will be to paint my uh, wooden blocks and I'm going to use this Burnt Amber by Arteza, beautiful color. And then uh, Waverly chalk paint, I mean uh, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a color linen white for the cardboard house. And I'm also using the same one to just dry brush it over the blocks. After I was done with that, it is time to write. I'm using again the Radon font and a pencil to write Let's Bake. And I'm tracing it over with a marker. Next thing will be to um, hot glue the house on a cardboard and that's it. It was so simple to make and it really, really looks more expensive than what it is. Number four, distressed looking vase. This is how this vase looks like now and I am in love with this vase. I love the color of it. I love the yellow sunflowers in it. I love everything about it. And it's all started with this very plain and simple yellow vase from the thrift store. First, I'm using my uh, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white, and I'm just going over some spots and kind of adding paint or actually dry brushing all over it. That's what I'm going to do throughout this um, whole tutorial. I'm going to dry brush it a different kind of uh, paint. So over here, I'm using Mineral by Waverly, also going around and dry brushing it. Um, later, I used, I think, also... Uh, linen uh, silver lining by uh, Waverly and now I'm using truffle by Waverly again for full, full tutorial you can go in my description box and find this video with the truffle paint I'm just going over the edges and making sure I am um, going over some beautiful details so they stand out next I'm putting this beautiful um, sunflowers in it and a little twine on top and that completes this beautiful project. My whole idea was that I wanted to create this cement looking or stone looking distressed vase and I really think I achieved that. I absolutely love it and um, this is going to be in my home for a long time. Number five clothespins succulent pot this is such a cute cute a little addition to any shelf or any space in a home it is so cute and so easy to make and i'll show you right now i'm just using a one um, small um, tin that i had left over from some food and a clothespins i'm opening all the clothespins taking off the spring and when i was done with all that i'm just hot gluing them uh, with their back um, to the tin until I ran out of the space and after that I am using my Waverly chalk paint in a color mineral and I am lightly painting it so a uh, kind of not completely painting it just very lightly and then I'm using my truffle by Waverly to distress the edges and give it a more depth and show off those beautiful details and clothespins. Next, I'm dry brushing all over with a Waverly um, chalk paint in a color white. Next, I am just adding um, this twine from the Dollar Tree. It is white twine, wrapping a few times and uh, creating a very simple bow. After that, I'm using uh, the succulent that came from the Dollar Tree uh, putting the flower foam and a little bit of moss, adding a hot glue to the succulent and putting it in a pot. And that's it. You see how simple it is? And it really looks absolutely beautiful.
Number six, clothespins cross. This cross is so beautiful. I still have it um, on my shelf and every time somebody sees it, they um, love it. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make it. So I need clothespins to make it. I open all the clothespins, so I actually take out the spring out of them and then I hot glue them back together the way they were originally, just without the uh, spring. After I was done hot gluing all of them, I am actually taking a three at a time and then I am putting them or actually hot gluing them together next to each other, like so. Again, if you want a full tutorial, detailed tutorial, you can definitely click on the link down below and see it. After I was done uh, with um, hot gluing three at a time, then I'm going to have uh, five sets of three. And the first thing I'm going to do is take two sets and hot glue them together where the heads meet. And then uh, next will be to take next set of three and put it on a top like so. Then take next set, hot glue it on the opposite end. And now we're forming the cross. And then the last set goes on the bottom to create a longer side of the cross. After I was done with that, I actually took a little bit of sandpaper just to sand a little bit um, the edges, the imperfections of the clothespins and the glue that was left on it. Next, I'm taki taking my acrylic paint in the color brown. I'm watering it down to make it look like a stain and I'm staining my cross. After it was dry, I'm taking my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brushing it all over. When that was dry, I took my white twine from the Dollar Tree, thread it through the clothespins on the top and uh, loop it through to make it a little hook in case I want to hang it. Next step will be to take the same twine and create a very cute little flower that I'm going to put in the middle of the cross. And that is it. That completes this project. I again absolutely love it it is not only um, for easter i did make it around the easter time but um, it is going to be in my house the uh, all throughout the year and i absolutely love it number seven galvanized lantern flower pot. I saw this beautiful lantern from the country door store. It was um, $19.99 and I knew I can recreate it for way less. So I'm taking this container from um, leftover from my husband's um, protein powder and I'm uh, spray painting it with this Krylon um, silver metallic paint. But before that, I am cutting off the top, as you can see, to create a very uh, short um, neck. While it was drying, I am uh, taking this handle from the basket from the Dollar Tree and I am um, creating a shape of the handle uh, like it was on the picture. Now that my uh, bucket or lantern was um, done drying, I'm taking this white, uh, light gray and a dark gray color to uh, start galvanizing it or actually make it look galvanized. This was my first time uh, making this galvanized, galvanized look and um, I was going by the picture. I wanted a lighter look and I think it turned out pretty good for the first time. Um, again, if you want a tutorial in details, you can definitely click on the description box link and you can go straight to that video. Now I'm taking my marker and I'm creating these little lines. Um, it's going to create faux openings like it was in a picture. And I'm also um, creating these little details that was on a picture on an original lantern as well. Next, I'm taking the copper and a brown acrylic paint 
and I'm mixing them together and I'm going over those fault lines um, just to make them more um, rustic and um, just more um, used up. After that, I am um, creating a hole with my hot glue gun to put the hooks on the lantern and here it is. This is how it looks like a lantern and I actually used um, my roses that I had to put in uh, and I think it looks beautiful as a vase as well. Number eight, paint tree sign. I um, created this beautiful paint tree sign using a transfer technique that I never used before. I wanted to try it and I'm gonna show you how it um, turned out. I'm using this uh, sign from the Dollar Tree and then I'm cutting out the a word um, or word pantry that I uh, actually uh, printed out and now I'm measuring where I want to cut this board. I'm cutting it with a box cutter. As you know, these Dollar Tree uh, signs are very easy to cut and then I'm sanding it just a little bit um, because I didn't want to have rough edges. After I was uh, done sanding it, it is time to paint it. I am uh, starting to paint all around and um, around the sign. So I'm leaving the middle part open. And um, I'm actually using the gray paint to uh, paint around it. And in the middle, I'm using my white paint, rust um linen white paint to paint in the middle. When I was happy with the paint, I'm using uh, water-based polyacrylic to uh, put one coat on top of the, my, my sign. And then I'm putting um, my letters facing down and then uh, pressing it pretty hard, making sure they stick really good. Um, and I'm doing that um, for the rest of the letters as well. When I was completely done putting my letters, I left them to dry all the way. After it was completely dried, I am um, actually taking the same sponge, sponge brush from the Dollar Tree and I'm applying a water, just a clear um, plain water on the top of the sign, making it wet. And then I am uh, rubbing the paper off with my fingers. And I'm doing that until the whole um, sign or actually all the words are revealed. I want to apologize if I sound a little bit weird, uh, if my words are not clear. I had a, a major dental procedure done, so I want to apologize if you don't understand some of the words. After I was done with this, I wanted to distress a little bit more the edges, making it even more rustic. And I'm using my Beverly Child paint in a color truffle for that. And this is how my pantry sign turned out. I absolutely love it. Like I said in an original video, I really like this technique and I'm gonna definitely try it again. Number nine, monogrammed serving tray. Uh, this beautiful tray with the letter K, which is the first letter of our last name, I've created um, as a part of the um, challenge that we had over here, Ugly Duckling Challenge. And funny enough, I found this tray that had an ugly duck on it. Um, and it was from the um, yard sale. I got it for very cheap. I think it was $2.00 but it was very sturdy and very good. So first I'm giving it a coat of uh, Rosolium linen white paint, chalk paint, and then I'm using these two acrylic paints, brown and um, light gray, uh, to distress it. I was just going back and forth until I was completely happy with uh, the color that I wanted, or actually the pattern that I wanted. And then after that, I am also adding the 
Beverly chalk paint and color mineral to it. And again, I was just going back and forth, adding it and layering it, uh, distressing it until I was completely happy with the distress level that um, I've created. And this is how it turned out at the end. I really like this um, distressed uh, look. After that, I'm using this uh, K letter to trace it in the middle of the tray and Beverly chalk paint in the color truffle that I watered down and um, I painted it. After that, I am distressing it a little more over it. And then with my pencil, I am going and uh, creating this wine. And after that, I am using this Beverly chalk paint in the color um, celery to fill out the vine. Next, I am taking very fine brush and a darker um, green color to just add a little dimension to these um, leaves. And also I'm gonna later add a white touch in the middle of these leaves, again, to create um, dimension and depth to it. And I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. After I was done with all this, I was um, adding the uh, water-based polyurethane or actually polyacrylic to uh, protect it because we are going to use this on a daily basis. I absolutely love it. Like I said, this is the uh, kind of a tray that I wanted to make for a while and I think it fits my decor um, really good and we do use it every single day. And the last one, number 10, recipe book holder. I've created this beautiful recipe book holder. Um, I always wanted to have one and I think uh, the one that I created is going to be in my house for a long time. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to show you how I made it. I took this love sign from uh, the Dollar Tree. I sanded down the um, shiny part, the letters. And then after that, I cleaned it really good. And then um, I took a paint stir stick that came from a Lowe's, I believe, and measured how uh, the width to it, and I uh, cut it out to the size. Then I'm using my linen white inner Rust-Oleum chalk paint and also the regular black um, acrylic paint to mix it and get this beautiful gray color. I um, painted all over the sign and all over this board as well. After, uh, or actually while that was drying, I took these um, Jenga blocks that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm measuring to the size, cutting it to the size. Uh, I wanted to, the same size as the paint stir stick that I cut and I'm gluing them all together and uh, painting the same gray color. After I was done painting it, I'm taking the Rust-Oleum white chalk uh, paint and I'm just distressing it a little bit and also distressing the edges with the truffle by Waverly. Then I'm taking the same white paint and um, dry brushing it on top of my sign. And while I was doing it, this beautiful, beautiful detail on the side, this wine um, actually popped out and I think it was such a good surprise. I love that detail. Next, I'm hot gluing my Jenga blocks piece to the stir stick piece in an L shape. And after that, I am hot gluing all that together uh, to my board. When you're creating this, if you want to use some other kind of glue, some stronger, you can. But I've been using this for, um, I think, more than a month and it stayed. It didn't move. Okay, after this was done, I thought it needed something extra, so I put um, the word homemade on the top. I just uh, freehanded it with a pencil and after that with a marker. And this absolutely um, completed this project. I thought this was what it was missing on this uh, board. And this is how it looks like. I really hope you guys um, like this project and my other uh, nine project that I showed you. If you did, please like this video, share it, 
and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye guys!